Hey everyone, this is Daniel from Phone Arena with a video review of the Nokia Asha 210, which is clearly targeting heavy texters and uh, instant messaging junkies with uh, its physical portrait QWERTY, Wi-Fi and WhatsApp integration deep in the contact book. It also has the Nokia Slam feature for sharing images and videos via Bluetooth uh, without having to pair it first. The Asha 210 is a rather boxy 0.46 inches, 11.8 millimeters uh, thick portrait QWERTY handset, which uh, actually lies pretty well in the hand and uh, whose set of keys is uh, pretty clicky and fast to master, unless you have uh, larger digits that cover two or even three letters uh, at once. The space bar here, it doubles uh, as a on off switch for the Wi-Fi connectivity upon long press. You can turn it off and on. And uh, the key on the left, the symbol key here, does the same for uh, Bluetooth. Besides the usual call and and the two tech context keys, navigation is done via this large home button in the middle with uh, an elliptical trackpad for navigation in the menus. Nokia added two dedicated quick launch keys as well. One for your social needs here that can be programmed uh, to launch the Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, or simply the browser apps. And the other is for a fast camera access. All the keys uh, are with good tactile feedback and they're pretty easy to feel and press. The dosing version of the Asha 210 comes with this uh, hot swap slot on the left side that takes uh, regular cards and is covered with a protective flap uh, in the same color as the phone's candy chassis, which comes in uh, pink, yellow, white and blue colors. The default uh, SIM card slot is uh, under the battery right here under the back cover, again a regular size and uh, there's a micro SD slot inside as well for storage expansion, stuffed with a 2 gigabytes piece uh, out of the box. The build quality of the Nokia Asha 210 feels uh, pretty sturdy, there are no creaks uh, or gaping crevices even on the back, where the easy to pry open uh, back cover is snapped into place. Granted, uh, the handset is uh, rather thick and squarish, but the design is uh, kind of cute and uh, the plastic is uh, of a pretty pleasant to hold quality for the price point. There's uh, a basic 2.4 inches 320 by 240 pixel screen. That's what Nokia has chosen for the Ashi 210 and it's 169 ppi pixel density make uh, the new series 40 UI appear somewhat pixelated uh, even in this small diagonal. The display is otherwise sufficiently bright uh, with uh, eight that subdued colors and with uh, decent vertical uh, viewing angles. The horizontal ones are pretty bad though, which will keep you from prying eyes uh, in the metro train at least. The new Series 40 interface for non-touch Ashes doesn't differ much from the one we already reviewed with the Asha 302. The icons uh, are very Symbian-like and there's a shortcut row at uh, the bottom here on the home screen for quick access to your most used applications. Above them the Ash 210 sports uh, this widget for rapid firing of the music and radio apps and in the dual SIM version here we have uh, another widget at the top which gives you the signal status of uh, both SIM cards which are hot swappable as the phone immediately connects to the second line upon insertion, you don't have to power it off first. And this is for access to the SIM manager app as well, that lets you control which card to use for calls, uh, text, data, and so on by default. Nokia is selling uh, the phone as a social and messaging powerhouse that would be suitable for the first phone of your teen, for example. That's why there's a dedicated Facebook or WhatsApp button here and uh, prominently placed messaging apps right here. And uh, the WhatsApp application lets you quickly attach a photo from the gallery, shoot to your group on the fly, but the whole process is pretty cumbersome with the context menus and trackpad keys, not to mention the typing speed uh, if you have larger hands. So this uh, programmable messaging key seems to be there mostly for marketing purposes. 
That goes for things like the YouTube uh, icon and app as well. It simply fires up uh, the browser and takes you to the mobile version of the YouTube site. As you can see, and uh, that's about it. The Asha 210 feels pretty slow with a basic uh, ARM processor and just uh, 32 megs of RAM despite the Series 40 UI, which is not graphically intensive. Going in and out of apps uh, or simply strolling through menus takes quite a bit for modern standards. There's a 2GB uh, microSD card for storing your pics, videos and files by default. And you can always add another for up to 32GB of storage. The Nokia Express browser pre-caches the pages uh, on Nokia servers and streams optimized content to you, saving you a lot uh, on data traffic. But uh, on this uh, 2.4-inch screen, you'll be hard-pressed to stay in the browser longer than needed uh, for a quick reference uh, or just uh, watching low-quality YouTube vids as the Asha sports a simple 2G connectivity. So the addition of uh, Wi-Fi is a huge plus. It also has uh, Bluetooth and FM radio through the connected uh, headphones serving as the antenna. There's no GPS though, so Nokia Maps navigation is out of the question. the YouTube video playback and it throws buffering on 60%. The gallery music and video players serve uh, your basic needs, though they aren't uh, graphically rich by a long stretch. You can uh, edit photos in the gallery with uh, basic editing functions, add effects and so on. There are equalizer presets uh, in the music player and uh, video playback will go up to a VGA resolution, but the experience on this uh, smallish screen is uh, understandably not that joyful. Here it is. As you can hear, the audio of the video keeps running in the background and the currently played video appears here on the widget. The 2 megapixel shooter on the back of the Asha 210 lacks a flash and can only shoot uh, very low resolution videos that are good for nothing. It is pretty quick to focus and snap though, but saving the photo takes a while afterwards, so short shot times uh, are about 4 or 5 seconds at least. There are a couple of uh, effects you can apply to your pictures. And uh, that's about it in terms of uh, features for the camera. The pictures actually look fine for the expected camera quality. Granted, uh, the reds are somewhat off and there's plenty of noise, but uh, detail is enough for a 2 megapixel shooter and the phone gets high dynamic range scenes right most of the time. Plus, there are no white balance issues. The Nokia Asha 210 goes for around 70 bucks without the contract subsidies. So for that price, you can't really ask for more than its uh, good call quality decent picture taken and cool exterior. It is rather slow though and the dedicated messaging features and a whole series 40 apps situation come in uh, rather gimmicky. For this kind of money you can't really get uh, even a low-end Android though it recommends splurging a bit more for one given the features trade-off but uh, you can look at the touchscreen equipped uh, Ashes for example like the 310 where at least you have more screen real estate to work with. If uh, you're nostalgic for portrait qwertys though, the Asha 210 is a quite cutesy and ultra affordable representative. To sum it up, uh, as the advantages of the phone, we would point out the good call quality, there's a good build quality and a pleasant to hold chassis and this uh, hot swap those sim capability, while the disadvantages are that it uh, feels slow and uh, the keyboard feels uh, rather cramped for larger hands. This was a video review of the Nokia Asha 210 from Phone Arena. For more information about this and other handsets, you can visit us at phonearena.com.